Hey everyone! In this tutorial I will go over the Adventure Kit example character blueprint and show you kind of a breakdown of how everything works. Um, so let's get started. First things are pretty simple, pretty much taken from the third person example template which are just movement inputs, so the axes are bound to the uh, movement input method that I've shown in the in the previous tutorials and on the other hand we have the mouse or gamepad input to change the look rotation. Then let's go over here. So this is a pretty straightforward jump. Uh, space is bound to jump and when it is hit the character jumps and when it is released the character stops jumping. Um, then we have inventory so the E key is bound to the use action and when the player presses the use key then the use closes usable function is called which internally activates a lever if the character overlaps it. Then we have uh, next and previous items which call next and previous item on the character so again a simple wrapper for cycling through inventory items. Then we have the crouch action in this case the character while well, crouch is bound to C and the character can't crouch but instead uh, he lets go of a current zone so if the character is currently climbing a ledge or a ceiling then we'll just let go and fall to the ground. Then we have the camera so the tab key is bound to next camera and as I've shown you in a previous tutorial we have an adventure kit camera controller that is configured and we just call next camera on this component. Weapons work in a similar fashion. Reload is bound to the R key and when it is pressed the character reloads and fire 1 and fire 2 are bound to the mouse button, the left and the right mouse button and the fire 1, so the left mouse button called start fire with the primary fire mode 0 and the fire 2 calls start fire with primary mode 1 and if you release the key, the gun stops firing. So this is a wrapper from the character. Internally it calls the adventure manager and the adventure manager in turn calls the active weapon if there is any. Okay, let's see next we have dodging. So dodge is bound to the left shift key and this first checks if there is currently a montage playing and if there is no montage and the character is walking then we'll play the dodging montage so the character dodges. Uh, over here this can be ignored for your own projects this is pretty much just a demo implementation to check if the character is currently on any of the demo maps and if so and escape is hit it goes back to the overview map and it, if it is already on the overview map then it quits the game. This can pretty much be ignored for own projects, this is merely for demo purposes of the adventure kit. Okay, next we have targeting. Um, so the X key is bound to lock target and we check first. And we first uh, set the current target as a new target so while the character is moving around any target that gets um, close to the character is set at the as the focus target and as soon as we hit the X key we toggle whether or not to lock onto that target. And we also set the camera to the target lock or the third person profile configuration. Okay, the next thing, this is important for um, point and clicks uh, when pressing the middle mouse button or the scroll wheel then the player controller gets, um, we, we check if the mouse cursor is currently shown and toggle this and call set cursor enabled on the character to show or hide the mouse cursor. Okay, so this is the basic functionality. The next thing I'll go over is how the zipline is implemented. So, um, each of the movement zones in the adventure kit comes natively. However, the zipline is not a native implementation, but 
um, rather an example implementation of a custom movement zone. Uh, and this is kind of to show you how you can implement your own movement zones. So the first thing we um, that is kind of done for this is we have overridden a lot of zone movement methods here on the left. Uh, the first one is the can transition to. And whenever the character hits or overlaps a zone or um, or uh, steps on a zone, then the, um, the the method can be can transition to is called, and it kind of asks can this next zone be entered um, or transitioned to. And normally, by default, um, this is set to use only the zones that come with the kit. But in this case, we check if um, our last zone, which is a variable in this blueprint, is the similar to the current to the zone we want to transition to. And this is because whenever the character overlaps a zone, he instantly wants to transition to it. But for the zipline, it can happen that when we leave the zipline and start falling, the character jumps a little forward and overlaps the zipline again. So there's a little trick for that. We just save our our zipline in the last zone variable, and we kind of check, make sure that the character just doesn't enter it immediately afterwards. Um, yeah, then let go of zone is called whenever the character um, wants to let go of a zone. We call this in the blueprint here. And in this case, we check if our current zone is a zipline. And if that is the case, we clear the zone and we set the movement mode to falling. And otherwise, we'll just call the native implementation. Then we have a function called get desired offset from zone, which means um, each time the character is in a zone, there's a little um, helper struct called zone location, and that is the location inside the zone, and the character is positioned relative to that. And the offset kind of moves the character far away from the zone. And by default, this can be configured on the character movement with these offset parameters. But for the zipline, of course, there is no um, configuration in this case. So we've created a custom variable on the character blueprint called zipline offset, and we return this um, as a vector if the character is on a zipline, on a zipline currently. And we only want the Z offset, so this is a simple float. OK, the next uh, method is for constraining the speed of a character inside a zone. So again, we check if our character is currently on a zipline. And if so, we say the maximum speed is our zipping speed variable. And if not, then we'll call the parent implementation. Okay, the next one is get zone acceleration. And this um, kind of tells the adventure kit how fast the character should move inside the zone and which direction it should go. Um, by default, this is a wrapper for the movement input, but for the zipline, we want the character to only move uh, down the zipline. So this kind of takes the forward vector um, of the zone and moves the character along with the zipping speed. Get desired rotation zone is similar to offset, but here we tell the character to always look in the direction that he is going in for the zipline. And lastly, we have a few things here. So whenever a zone is entered from an overlap or a hit, or someone something else, the call uh, the method set zone is called, and in this case we check if the new zone is a zip line, and if that is the case we reset the zipping speed so the character starts at uh, zero speed when in a zone. So each tick we check we check if the character is still in the zip line zone, and if that is the case 
we'll add the zone, the zipping acceleration variable to our zipping speed and multiply this by delta time, which means gradually the character is gaining speed. But we also don't want the character to gain speed uh, forever, so we clamp it here. So it can't ever go faster than max zipline speed. And in the end we set that to the zipline speed. And um, that is all how all the zipline works. And we have a last, last little thing here, which is the update custom physics. This is um, um, an event from the Unreal Engine. So whenever the movement mode of the Adventure uh, Kit movement component is set to custom, uh, this function gets called. And this can uh, be used for things like the grappling hook in this case. So the grappling hook has an interface implemented um, which is called BPI movement, driving item. And this takes care of moving the character. So the grappling hook, whenever it is attached to something, sets the movement mode of the character to custom and then takes care of moving the character itself. And that's pretty much the default implementation of the sample character in the adventure kit. Thank you for watching.